so, uh, welcome Dean Blackburn, lecturer in modern British history. Um, I wonder if we could start today by you telling us a little bit about the, uh, your research. Yeah. I mean, one thing to say is I'm not a, a traditional kind of historian. Uh, I don't spend that much time going into archives um, and surrounded by dusty documents. And that's partly because I've got one foot in politics and political theory. Uh, so what I'm interested in are political ideas and the stories that we tell about them. Uh, so I do do a bit of history. I do talk about the past, but I'm really using the past as a bit of a laboratory for thinking about how we study kind of ideas. And the way I approach ideas is to um, collapse them into those basic concepts that we always use to think about politics. So think about things like equality, justice, community, risk, these are kind of the raw materials of political thinking. Uh, and what I like to do is try and understand how different political actors interpret them, because they can be interpreted in all sorts of different ways. Uh, and once we think about ideas in this way, it opens up new ways of understanding things like political change, which is, is what I've been interested in uh, recently. So not really a proper kind of historian in the traditional sense, um, but I definitely think about the past. Uh, just in slightly different ways to, to, to most of us. But that's really, really interesting. And I think uh, one of the important works that, you write, uh, that you've written is that it's your 2020 book, 2020 uh, work, uh, Penguin Books and Political Change. Can you tell us a little bit about that and why that's so important? Yes, yeah, so I wrote this book uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, it came out in 2020, right in the middle of the, the COVID pandemic, which is a really interesting time to, to try and get a book out. Um, and... It is a historical book. It's all about post-war Britain. Uh, so what I did was I took a collection of books, uh, quite popular paperback books, that Penguin, uh, the publisher, had, had, had put out uh, between the 1930s and the 1980s. And I used them to try and tell a story about politics and political change. And the central argument I made is that if there was one kind of idea or set of ideas that kind of held British politics together in the post-war period, it was this idea of meritocracy, the idea that everyone should have an equal chance to climb the social ladder. Now, I don't suggest that this was kind of a complete consensus and everyone agreed with it all, but I think that it kind of cut across the political divide, this idea that everyone should have an equal chance to, to be unequal, in a sense. Um, and 2020 was a really interesting time to publish that book because we were having all of those debates about how wealth should be divided up. We had this whole conversation about key workers and why they were paid so little for the valuable work that they did. Mm. And what I did when the book came out is, is try to write a few opinion pieces saying, well, look, we've had these debates for a long time. You know, this idea that some people um, are seen as deserving of more rewards and others are not is not new at all. And if we want to try and find solutions to these kind of problems, the past can really help us. Yeah, I mean, that's really, really interesting. And, and that you, what you're saying here is that your research and, and historical research in general has real world resonance that's what you're really suggesting yeah absolutely i mean and that goes back to this thing that i'm not really a traditional historian huh. i kind of just see the work as kind of problem solving and hopefully solving those problems has real world implications right so uh, what then are you working on at the moment so at the moment i'm really interested interested in time now of course every historian's interested in time it's kind yeah. of the the backdrop for, for history full stop but I'm interested in it in a particular sense. So I want to understand how political actors understand time, how they, in a sense, construct time. So I'm interested, for instance, in the idea of a crisis. When is it that we decide that we're living through a crisis? You know, this kind of a brief moment of time when everything seems to be kind of up for grabs. So what I'm doing at the moment is trying to look at some episodes in Britain's recent past and understand how political elites thought about time at those moments. And again, hugely uh, relevant, I think, to the situation in which we find ourselves today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, at the moment, lots of people are talking about, you know, the idea of lost futures, yeah. you know, the idea that certain expectations about the future, certain what we might call horizons of expectation, have kind of disappeared. Um, and, and that's had big impacts on, on our politics. Yeah. Um, when you say to a political group um, or, or a set of voters, um, look, here's a load of promises that we've made you, here's a load of expectations you might have, and then they are not realised, that has implications. Mm -hmm. To some extent, I think that's what's going on at the moment in our politics, is that we're dealing with the fact that lots of people are not having or experiencing the future 
that uh, that they were promised. Right. Uh, you make the interesting point about the definition of crisis as well. You mm. know, when when are, what is a crisis, and when often yeah. often in economic terms, you're, uh, we often define crises in economic terms. But you're suggesting that this has um, a throughput to politics, or is it, it impacts politics? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my view is that a crisis is always constructed. Yes. You know, absolutely. we always have to, in a sense, believe there's a crisis. The objective material conditions, yeah. the kind of facts of the situation. Mm. They do matter, but at some point we need to say, right, this is an exceptional moment in time and that a decisive intervention is needed to put things right. That's right. when we're in a crisis. Yeah. One political actor that I um, use a lot in my teaching is Margaret Thatcher. Uh, and Margaret Thatcher in the 70s and 80s was very clever at doing this, saying, look, if we don't do something decisive now to change course, yeah. we'll never have the chance again. Yeah. So making this argument about time and history in order to put her agenda um, at the, the top of, of, uh, of the political agenda. Yeah, very interesting. Um, so your research clearly uh, leads on to uh, you know, future research and it, thinking about it in terms of PhD, uh, PhDs that you've supervised or ideas that you might consider uh, supervising. Can you tell me something about that? Yeah, I mean, one thing um, that I should say is that um, the PhD research is always kind of collaborative, I think. So all yeah. the other PhDs that I've supervised, it often feels like a kind of a conversation about ideas or emerges from a conversation about Absolutely. ideas. Um, so we talked earlier about my book. Um, right in the middle of writing that book, an undergraduate student approached me and they were really interested in kind of ideas, particularly about equality. And I said, oh, why don't you read this book? It was published in the 1950s about the idea of meritocracy. And I said, oh, yeah, I'll go away and read that. And they found it really interesting. And after they read it, I said, you know what, someone should come along and write kind of hist a history of this idea or this word meritocracy and the different meanings that have been given to it in British politics. A couple of years down the line, they did exactly that. They, they put in a bid for some funding, they got the funding, and they spent three and a half years uh, researching meritocracy right at the time that I was working on this book. So it really felt like the supervisions were kind of an exchange of ideas. I was helping the student to think about their work and they, in lots of ways, were helping me think about, about my book. By the time that, that a student is, is towards the end of their, yeah. their doctoral study, they usually know a lot more about the subject matter than Absolutely, we do. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really interesting because you, you can learn a lot from them, both yeah. in terms of knowledge, but also in terms of some of the kind of big ideas. Yeah. Um, so they're really good to kind of bounce ideas off. And that's, a, that's the right way it should, that's the way it should be. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's, that's really good. Uh, really helpful. So uh, the Department of History at Nottingham is well known for its uh, research-led teaching and, uh, and we've spoken about your research. Uh, can you tell us how the research that you've done, that about which we've spoken today, mm -hmm. is woven into your undergraduate teaching? Yeah, now this might be the kind of political scientist, me, scientist in me coming out, but I really see a good undergraduate seminar is kind of like a laboratory for right. ideas. So really, if it's going well, the seminar really should just be us all experimenting with ideas. So right. we come to the laboratory with different problems, we try to solve them with experiments. And right. some experiments will work and some won't, but hopefully we get to the end of the seminar, we've all got a better understanding of the nature of the problem. Right. And that's what teaching is to me, right. really. So, um, Dean, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure, thanks Richard.